time, Mr. Nat King Cole brings us another unforgettable viewpoint program. If you'll recall, Mr. Nat Cole has made the song Unforgettable very famous down through the many years. There are a lot of things I don't recall. You may have noticed. I noted that. Well, Sitting here every Wednesday, I that noted that no, frequently. No, I, I, I forgot to get a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's just get around down to serious business here with Viewpoint. Um, as you might remember, Mrs. Co-host, that we usually try to start this program with a kudo or two. Yes, sir. Uh, in this case, we'll make it two kudos under the same umbrella. Uh, kudos to Mark Miller, former fire chief who's now retired. Yes. Well earned. Uh, fine man. Did a great job as, a, as our fire chief. Uh, and uh, kudos also to his uh, successor, um, Matt. Uh, Bob Donowski. Bob Donowski, thank you. Oh, it's a good thing we have the chalkboards in this stage. <laughs> so, uh, Bob, you got big feet to follow him in more ways than one. So, uh, yeah, congratulations to you. Uh, we would be under uh, uh, under good control. So, uh, let's get down to serious business because we got some serious stuff to talk about this morning. Why you're uh, you're going to make both of the listeners think that Jim is un working under higher the handicapped. Or well, something. he is working. He's got me sitting here. That's a handicap. <laughs> No question about that. <laughs> oh, heck and darn. Well, I have... I'm still eating breakfast. You go right ahead. Okay, well, don't <laughs> let us interfere. I have a, I have an announcement to make, and then I have an introduction to make. Uh, the high school... Wait a minute, wait a minute. We have to have a trumpet sound. Oh. Da-da-da, da-da. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lincoln High School's uh, musical, the spring musical, Fiddler on the Roof, will begin... Tomorrow evening, 7 p.m., uh, you have to go a little early because you have to get your ticket there at the door. And uh, it's really very worthwhile. Uh, in fact, Mr. Grau's son is participating in that. A uh, man with Does considerable he? talent, by the way. I mean that seriously, son. Thank you. He is... Uh he has a pretty good stage presence. Yes, yes, he does That's that. That's just yes, wonderful. That. But, the talent, but the talent to back it up, mm -hmm. which is... Which and is can he carry a tune, too? Yes, he has a very good Oh, he got the whole package, voice. didn't he? Yes, he did. He uh, did his last choir spring concert last Tuesday, and he won the, or he was awarded the uh, the Senior Director's Award, which is kind of a big deal. And oh, gosh. He's really, really taken to, uh, to theater and stage and choir and uh, has a good time with it. It's a positive influence with the other kids and we're, we're very, very proud Does of it. Does he intend then to go on? I think he'll uh, he'll probably do some choir in college, but he's not going to pursue a career in it at this point. Oh, oh For a couple well, hundred dollars I could kind of help out on some college scholarships. There we go. Several of them. Probably be more than a couple hundred bucks. So. <laughs> That'd be good news. Thing. You know, people are paying millions to get into schools, yeah. and he's offering you financial. He's help. a bargain. <laughs> Holy just, Friday! Just boggles my mind. It's just, that just, it's hard for an uh, old man like me with an old mind like this, wrap it around that type of skullduggery. It, it never occurred to me that. Yeah, God. Cheaters never prosper. Yeah, right. Well, go right ahead. Well, Please. just for your entertainment, uh, the good Lord allowed lots of kinds of people to come to the earth, and uh, some of them I have that. very unique ideas. And uh, yeah, I can name a bunch of them. They're under a big dome out there in Washington D.C. And <laughs> you bet. Uh, and uh, I think they got some friends down in the town uh, just uh, south of us here. A lot of screws loose out there. Yeah, right. you want to believe it? All uh, right. Well, enough about the politicians. Oi, oi, oi. Um, we are going to talk. Tevia said that. Huh? <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tavia said that. Oh. Um, well, we're going to talk about pigs and swigs. The festival is coming. Mm -hmm. 
actually the end of this month. Chris Grau and Michelle Boward are with us and they are going to tell us all the where's and why's and costs and offerings and Well you uh, forgot to give Chris his due here now. See the USA in a Chevrolet. Oh well <laughs> and, that, and that by the way is going to cost you some money. <laughs> I, got a, I got a funny little story to tell you about Bob Grau two yeah. days before he Good. passed. My favorite guy. Um, my dad passed May 15th, Friday, May 15th, 2009, yeah. and he had made the decision to kind of move on. He was out for a couple days, and then Wednesday the 13th, two days before he passed, he woke up, carried on a conversation, then sat on the edge of the bed and sang, See, your US, see the USA in your Chevrolet all the way through. Did well, he really bless without, his heart? Without any kind of lyrics, he just did it from memory. I was there to a, see it, and it was, it was amazing. What a magnificent memory! Well, what a is. gift yeah. to you, though, Chris. You know, to have that memory. Sure. Uh, that's fun. Well, he got Bob to Grau, Chris early. Jack, Jack Grau, like Bob Grau, had an amazing way with people, and could sing and carry a tune, and it's just a, a great memory to remember that. Yeah, you yeah, bet. That, that really is. That, that is truly something. That's fun. Uh, Bob Grau did something else. He passed Bob Grau on to Chris Grau. Mm. Oh. And, yeah, uh, in, in so many ways. And that inures to our benefit, Michelle. Absolutely. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate there you saying no that. There is no doubt about it. Yeah. yeah. Those are some uh, mighty big shoes to fill there, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know if I'll be, ever be able to do that, but I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, well, that's that's true. According to all reports, you're doing real well. <laughs> <laughs> I would Thank concur. you, Judy. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle uh, yeah. has retired now. We're going to get into the Swigs uh, <laughs> business here shortly. Uh, Michelle has recently retired as an older person. Notice I didn't say alderman. Did you have um, fun? I did. did I enjoyed you? my We thank you for that. Uh, that, that it takes a lot of dedication. <laughs> it I is mean, a lot more time consuming than people believe, um, and it is uh, a lot um, a lot more thankless <laughs> than oh. most people would Well, uh, sometimes assume. you wake up some night in the early morning and say, how the hell did I get into this? <laughs> yeah, what was I thinking today? How can those people be so d dumb? <laughs> <laughs> well, you wonder. Yeah, there are parts of you, but I was privileged to serve this community, I believe, very strongly in what Lincoln and Logan County have to offer. Um, and the people I served with, department heads, fellow aldermen, uh, the mayors that I served with and under, um, as well as the people and the staff throughout the city were super kind to me. Um, really, really intensely focused and determined people that really want to see Lincoln and Logan County grow. And um, I just needed to take some time to refocus my energies on my well, family, she's a, she's a business, rising star in the insurance so. business here. Yeah. Well, right. Opening up a new, uh, that's another, that'd be another commercial. That takes a little time. <laughs> it takes a little time. <laughs> well, she's and, opened uh, up her new office I've there. I've got little girls that are 8 and 11 that it's hard are going to gonna need their mama. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had a whole bunch of little girls, <laughs> but now they're all big. Yeah, it happens. So they pigs get and big, swigs coming on. What's the, what's the initial, oh, the date on uh, uh, where we open up the... Uh, May 31st and June 1st is the official yes. date. Yeah. Things will start rolling in on Thursday the 30th. Yeah. And they're going to roll into what address? Well, all around the square downtown. Good deal. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Uh, are you having lots of participation this year? We are. Um, new, some new people? Well, we have, some, we have our, our furthest contestant coming from Oak Point, Texas oh to cook steak on Friday night. We changed up our, uh, our steak Man, contest. that's out of town, Chris. Yeah, seven, 750 miles this guy's driving Oofta. to cook a steak. Um, and the reason why he's coming is we changed from, we're now a, a sanctioned steak cook-off where before it was just a side category with Kansas City Barbecue Society. Like KCBS, they're the sanctioning organization that organizes and runs the, the barbecue portion of it, our steak contest is going to be sanctioned by SCA or the State Cook-Off Association of America. And do they handle any judging then? Yes. We go by their rules. It's their their set of rules, their judging procedure. Uh, we will have uh, SCA judges that will come in and actually do the judging for us along with some 
specially trained sponsors. One of the one of the uh, benefits of being a sponsor for this event is you get to you get to taste some steak if uh, we're able to, to seat you as a judge. So some of our um, upper level sponsors will be steak judges that night, which is is kind of a neat deal for them. So we're not playing in Burton View anymore. No. no. <laughs> Unfortunately, last year I, w I was in interrupted. My steak judging was interrupted by Governor Rauner coming to see us. So oh, yeah. Yeah. I had to host Governor Rauner for a tour around the, well, sure. the courthouse. Don't worry about that this time. Yeah, well, I don't know that JB will come on his Harley. Who knows? But I, I don't know if uh, Governor Pritzker right, will show up. Does he have a Harley? I don't, I don't think he does. Oh, he probably got a share <laughs> well, of there, 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 there is the initial impact. Seeing your governor come around to square on a Harley Davidson. <laughs> I'd like to see that side, by the way. Uh, now move on quickly. Uh, the um, the fact that you bring somebody all the way from Texas uh, and other areas that are far, that tells me that uh, the word is out about Lincoln, Illinois, and this uh, little festival we have each fall. Well, we uh, we push the word out pretty heavily to the competitors through the, the sanctioning summer, organizations. I mean. And one of the reasons why it does so well is because we've got a, a nice price purse for the contestants overall with uh, sure. sponsors that we have from the local businesses that make this thing happen. And uh, without that, this event would not not go on and would not be the success that it is. Well, that's the bi a big selling point for many festivals across the country is uh, how's the purse mm -hmm. you know well the fact that you have people who are willing to step up to the batter's box and swing a pretty good sized bat insofar as your sponsorships are concerned uh, you don't you don't drag these people in here just because they're nice folks sure uh, there's some money out there that uh, and, and their pride of, of participating in, in an important event because obviously this is becoming an important event for those who are in that what do I want to say in that hobby uh, but that can be a, as Mr. Grau will tell you that can be a doggone expensive hobby. Oh, you bet. And there are people that uh, travel far and wide for the barbecue portion of it. We've got two competitors going to come back from Michigan. Our grand champion, reserve grand champion, our business partners that came all the way from, I think it was up around Detroit, north of Detroit, um, the barbecue superstore, Richard Parker and uh, Mark Rasmussen are coming back. And then we've got uh, a handful of regulars that are coming back as well. Um, We've got our uh, past grand champion, uh, Mark Anderson, or Tom Anderson from Monster Q from Springfield, retired three years ago, but the last three years, the only contest he has done is He's Lincoln. here. Good and for him. We've got his spot right across the street from the Farm Bureau building that's reserved for him that he'll come back to. Is there? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bless his heart. Well, I'm sure you find yourself making friends with some of these oh, people who've been there. It's neat times. to be friends with them on Facebook and see their posts after oh, yeah. the event, during the year, before the event. It's it makes you feel good. It's a lot of work, but we do develop some pretty good relationships with these folks, and we love showcasing downtown Lincoln, and we love bringing people to town. Um, it brings a tremendous crowd to Lincoln that we're both very, very proud of. Michelle works very hard on the uh, the craft beer, craft wine and beer portion of it. We put a lot now of time. She told in the me she was she was studying up for that real good. <laughs> yeah. A lot of taste testing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> she spoke very highly of, of yeah. her participation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've always made it a point, Chris, to uh, uh, stop in and visit with our uh, our contestants, for want of a better word, on, on your uh, cook-offs. And I was making a point to. Uh, Ask with, I say. Obviously, you're being treated well. You've come back to see us again. Yeah, oh, this is this is one of the best. Your contestants will say that, and and that's that's a kind of a good feeling for Lincolnite to know that these people are treated well enough that they want to, they make it a point to come back uh, for the next contest. Well, we've got a, a committee of about 15 individuals that help put this thing on, and everybody takes ownership of it and mm -hmm. it's the the old adage or the old phrase from uh, Apollo 13 failure is not an option and no matter what this thing's going to be a success mm -hmm. and we've got enough people on board that it's not that weekend it's not such a tremendous taxing thing on any one person or any two people sometimes you go to some of these outdoor events these contests and they'll have 
a 30 a 30 team contest for for KCBS and they'll have two people running it and you can't ever find them because they're so busy well sure we got 15 people and we've got enough people to go around to make sure that stuff goes smoothly and can kind of anticipate things before they happen to take care of things and I just I, uh, I I'm very very fortunate to, to be associated with Michelle because she works very hard on the craft beer and wine portion of it. She's I've got a proven really good, she knows how to mm -hmm. work, hasn't she? Um, very fortunate that I've got a very dedicated group of uh, individuals that I work with. We're having a committee meeting this evening. We'll meet every Wednesday from here on out uh, before the event just to talk about things to make sure that we got everything covered. So it's it's coming. And, our, and on our end, um, our committee is a much smaller committee, um, but my volunteer core is critical. Um, and I have some uh, individuals within the community that look forward to volunteering for this festival. They volunteer for both nights in several different capacities. And my breweries and my wineries have told me year after year after year that they are taken care of to the point that they're almost annoyed <laughs> in a positive <laughs> way. Of, Do you need anything? Can we help you with something? Are you sure you're okay? Um, and I have people that volunteer to just be hospitality folks for me throughout the weekend to make sure they have enough ice to open glasses to help open cases of um, cases of bottles of beer if need be to carry out garbage um, all the way to uh, people who guest pour at the winery tents or the brewery tents for folks so they can actually use the restroom I mean they stand there from four o'clock until eleven o'clock you know at some point in time they need to leave their post and we have some great Imagine. folks that really, my volunteers are critical. We are doing a volunteer sign up tomorrow <laughs> night at uh, Spirit of Republic from 5 to 7. So if you're interested in volunteering for the Swigs portion, if you come by Spirit of Republic and sign up for a shift, um, we'll give you one free drink at Spirited with some snacks and then um, get your t-shirt size ready to go so that when you come volunteer for the weekend, you get your t-shirt and uh, know your assignment for uh, helping for the weekend. But it takes about 63 different volunteers or positions to be filled throughout a two-day festival for just the swigs portion for me to be able to pull off what I pull off. When do you start? Now your your festivities this year are the 31st through the 2nd. I imagine by June 3rd you're back in the saddle aren't you? Technically June 2nd we are in the streets of Lincoln at 8 a.m. tearing everything down. By noon on the second there will be n there's usually barring any kind of major catastrophe weather etc streets are open well, you go downtown at noon on, on Sunday and it looks like nothing ever happened there'll be the one the bandstand from Decatur Park District sits at the angle from Kickapoo and Broadway near uh, defades right there because they're closed on Mondays mm -hmm. and by 8 a.m. on Monday morning Decatur Park District's picking up that van or that truck, the trail, the stage itself. So we try to do our best to make sure that when this festival leaves, downtown business can run as usual as possible by Sunday afternoon. Bless your hearts. Well, on the swigs end of it, uh, Chris is talking about uh, being sanctioned mm -hmm. and so forth. Now, do you have those same? We have we carry liquor liability um, uh, for the through the city and the state of Illinois that allows our breweries to come and actually hand out the samples. So, but we purchase our and our entity purchases all of the liquor that comes through the festival. So, um, so there the wineries themselves have insurance and they have all of that. So do all the breweries because they run. But for the weekend, that um, the purchase of all the alcohol comes from our festival. So it's critical for us to have people in the in the doors um, yeah. if you've ever ever dealt with keg beer once you open a keg of beer it's open and you can't really you got to use it or you lose it and the moment we open a keg of beer we pay for that keg of beer oh, so really? if we have a really good Friday night and it rains on a Saturday night we have to be able to cover that cost regardless so again Chris mentioned his sponsorship um, my sponsors are so grateful I'm so grateful for them they've been so good to us State Bank is actually coming on as our full glass sponsor this year we are heartbroken last year our dog 
our dog glass was one of our glass sponsors and had been for the last four years and unfortunately with them factory closing we lost them and that was a huge hit to our festival but also a huge hit to our hearts because that group was so good to us you know um, let me tell you what kind of an economic uh, predictor prognosticator i am worried about our, our places around town mm -hmm. closing and uh, our very important uh, mm -hmm. industries and I said, oh, we'll never worry about the glass bottle company because mm -hmm. they make they make beer bottles, and, that, <laughs> and that's never going out of style. Right. Well, I sure right. was wrong about that. Yeah, uh, so they had been yeah, so hurts. good to us. Um, so we were so lucky this year to have some new businesses actually step in and say, um, <coughs> we'd love to help with this festival. And actually, some of our longtime sponsors actually increased their sponsorship levels this year oh, nice. in order to make up the difference for that, so that Bless we could hurts. still um, we could still pull off the festival in. A in a way and a rhythm that they've people have gotten used to attending so that's been great for us comment about the sponsorship we had we had some things kind of shift with doc dogs with a couple of the sponsors shifting money where they weren't able to pledge the same amount that they did last mm -hmm. year word kind of got out about that phone call after phone call after phone call hey I'll give 500 hey I'll give 750 hey I'll give 300 really? we got to make sure that that comes back absolutely doc dogs has to come back so it's you know the generosity of the community of Lincoln and Logan County just never stops where people are so giving they want to see things happen they want to be a part of it it just makes you feel good that yeah. you bring something to town and people want to see it come back and the generosity and the people stepping forward to be able to make that happen just makes you feel good and you know Chris we have some sponsors like that and that very kind of an attitude uh, <laughs> we got, I got so interested in this and Mrs. Busby just kind of keep pushing me aside so I can't ask any questions at all <laughs> <laughs> no seriously uh, be the day. we get we get, <laughs> we get engrossed with our guests so often that we forget that we have some sponsors that are paying for this time but mm -hmm. so we're going to recognize that go right ahead Mr. Ash and having said our thanks to our sponsors and we really mean that saying thanks to our sponsors uh, we return now to the studios here. The program, of course, is a Viewpoint, appearing each Wednesday morning, 8.15 to 0900 hours. Our guests this morning, two very important folks in our community, and I mean this very sincerely. Uh, I first came acquainted with Michelle when she was with, uh, a part of Lincoln College's staff, and we missed her when she uh, decided to become an entrepreneur and enter into the uh, business world. Now runs her own insurance agency, does very nicely uh, there in her new, uh, in her new uh, quarters there on South McLean Street. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, of course, Mr. Chris Grouse, uh, uh you just say Grouse, and he say, oh, yeah, I remember that name. Uh, and they don't think about the USA and their Chevrolets. That was an interesting story that you had mentioned about Bob and his last yeah. Very fond memories with us. That's, that's a, that, that, that got to me. I'll think about that often. Anyway, we're, uh, here we have a good example of people who volunteer in Lincoln to make something work. And we're now uh, into the uh, annual cook-off, Pigs and Swigs, if that's the name you're going to use. Um, so, Mrs. Busby uh, is propounding sincere questions, deep philosophical questions. Heaven only knows where she gets them. But <laughs> go right ahead, Mrs. Busby. Well, I, I Especially think... with a deep philosophical Yes, right. That's, that's me, all right. Oh, you <laughs> betcha. Um... Let's talk about your schedule, your openings and your lineups and your judging, and because you judge not only the uh, pigs but the swigs as well. Correct. So there's a lot of a whole lot of judging going on. They never asked there me is. to do that, didn't they? <laughs> well, you know more. somebody. <laughs> we could probably get you in. I was gonna say, yeah, just tell us what you want. So. You want me to, I'll start the weekend. All right, right so um, for Friday and Saturday, um, Friday evening, we're going to start, we'll open the doors at 6 o'clock to the beer garden area. It is 21 entry. These so would be I mythical doors, the folks. It is 21 entry. Um, your entry is a $5 cover and or you can do a $20 package for the evening. That $20 package gives you your option of either a wine glass or a beer glass. Um, t 10 tickets that go in those glasses for your tastings to go around and visit each winery and brewery. And 
and then that $5 cover. So it is a better deal to get the $20 deal. Right. Um, but uh, if you want to just pay $5 and do anything a la carte, you can. Um, those are a dollar a ticket per tasting. So there are is some options for folks. We have some swag. We'll have things that you can purchase, um, little trinkets to remember the weekend by. Uh, we have 10 breweries and three wineries participating this year. So Friday night runs from 6 o'clock until 11. We have a band. We have two bands. We have a band that is uh, Leslie Bennett is actually going to sing and start our evening on Friday night. And then Jacked Up in the Empty Bottles is going to play uh, in the evening on Friday night. And those two of those gentlemen graduated from class of 1995 in Lincoln Let High me have School. that name again, Empty Bottles. Yeah, please. Jack up it's d-u-p-p and the empty bottles but when you say it really fast it's jacked up in the <laughs> empty bottles it's pretty clever but Who joe in Borbley, the world thinks joe, that I don't know. joe Borbley and mike klug are class of 95 lc grads that are coming back and playing with that band so that'll oh, be a great, great night to see them and then saturday we start uh, our gates our beer garden area opens at 11 o'clock with homebrew turn-in for our homebrew contestants people that want to participate in having their home beers just um, it is five dollars a beer to enter those ju those beers. Um, you bring two of each, and they each get judged on by category. And then the one winners of each category get judged then as um, a best in show. Uh, that runs from twelve to four. The judging turn in at eleven. And there is also a two man bring your own partner bags tournament that starts oh. at eleven o'clock on. Um, um, inside the beer garden area that runs from 11 to 4 mm -hmm. and so that is bring your own partner that day sign up registration that day we'll start signing you up any time between 10 and 10 30 there is cash payout for that and prizes awarded for that as well that runs until 4 and then at 4 o'clock the beer garden tasting with the rest of the brewers coming back and the wineries coming back starts again from 4 o'clock to 11 on Saturday with um, <coughs> some local guys and I'm gonna have to look this up because they told me their name last minute. It is the Wasted Tables Volume 2. <laughs> they're playing <laughs> They're playing from 5 to 7 on Saturday. Those guys are also local Lincoln gentlemen. Two of them uh, actually graduated from Lincoln College and played um, as part of the jazz band there. So Caleb Coppinger, Derek Spiker, Derek Young, those guys are playing. And then Tennessee Borderlines coming back to close our evening on Saturday night. And again, we just have uh, open air beer garden uh, it is fantastic the sound is fantastic um, the uh, atmosphere is wonderful all of the breweries and wineries have the opportunity to really engage with the uh, clientele as they come in you can in talk to them ask them more about why they do what they do what brings the passion to this and I also have one big beer wagon that we s supply um, and on that wagon I, I like to say is our gateway beers so the ones that aren't as quite as copy and crafty they're a little less uh, intense a little more subtle um, and some ciders for people that are more into that fruit side of the beer but what was the, what was the grapefruit beer last year it's a grapefruit sculpin we're not bringing it back but we are bringing a ruby red grapefruit back from um, Sh uh, Shiner Rock never so been a big be really fan good. of funky beers I, I, I enjoy drinking beer I like different kinds of beer this grapefruit beer they offered me a sample of it last year and I'm just wild about it yeah well we are gonna, we're gonna bring back a ruby red Red beer this year, so I hopefully like citrus, that's pretty good. But grape, so. that grapefruit was really, really good. And I will tell you, I'm very, very excited. Limerick Brewing, which is our local Lincoln, Illinois brewing, um, which is housed right now with Spirited Republic, but Limerick Brewing is going to have their own tent this year. Wow. So they are coming out, they'll have their beers showcased on the square, right alongside some of the other guys that they're we have. They're not going to hide this thing anymore. So they? they have a really awesome tent out there, and they're going to compete right along with everyone else for best beer and best brewery for the weekend. Shocking. Just so shocking. I'm super excited about it. Um, our breweries are all local. Our wineries are all Illinois-based wineries. So really? we are not using anyone that is not Illinois-based. And we tried to, actually within 35 to 60 miles, we've tried to stay as close as we can so that people can actually engage with those breweries. And if they like their things, engage with the wineries. If they like their items and their, they can actually go visit. And it gives them an opportunity to actually develop a relationship with our local um, folks as well. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, pardon my ignorance once again, <laughs> but 
uh, how do how do these breweries and wineries work? They they have a setup. I've seen mm -hmm. at Spirited Republic mm -hmm. uh, when they just were beginning. Yep. Uh, they're brewing. Yes. And um, how in the world do they? operate do they sell this product to well, the people at, at this festival no in order for breweries technically can't by the state law they can't sell at a festival that's why we as the organizers of the festival we purchase the kegs so if they'll bring a couple kegs or bottles of beer out and once they're opened that we now purchase them whether they run through them or not uh -huh. um, but it, it gives everybody the opportunity to try you get a tasting portion of about a three ounce size or one ounce with wine and you can try you've got 10 tickets to start with and you can try a little bit of everything find something you like and then there is an opportunity then if you want to do a full pour glass if you find something and you say this is it hands down this is what I like you can go back to that tent over and over and over again and get yourself a full glass if you'd like um, but we try to bring a variety of breweries a variety of wineries um, West of Wise is coming this year as a winery and they do sangrias they're very popular and and um, Hill Prairie is coming with our um, with their winery again this year, and then we have a brand new winery this year, and I have to look at it because I haven't, I don't know that I have it written down. I don't, and that's terrible. But I will get it back to you. Um, well, that's, that's okay. We'll come year. out so and find. We them. just we're very excited. We have a lot of returning favorites, and we have some great new up and coming breweries in the local areas that we had to get had to get out and expose to the people. So Buzz Bomb's a brand new one out of Springfield. They're coming to us this year. And Rolling Meadows is back, um, doing really good work out of Springfield. So You know, Mrs. Busby, once again, you and I are guilty of transgressing on our listeners' time. There might be somebody out there, one or two of our listeners, uh, might like to ask a question. Or of, both uh, of them. Mrs. Bauer and uh, Mr. <laughs> Grau. 648 uh, 5510 so feel free to step in, and there are no stupid questions. Uh, you may think that they uh, aren't up to your standards, but uh, this <laughs> this is rather interesting, and a, a look forward to event that we have here in Lincoln, Logan County, and it it comes as a result of, of a few people putting in a heck of a lot of work. Oh I my mean, gosh, yes, a lot of work. Go right ahead. Claire. I did want to make make mention one of the very generous sponsors or very generous people that stepped forward to make sure that Doc Dogs came to came back to town mm -hmm. were uh, the Rotes and the, the hangers of Spirit of Republic. Mm -hmm. um, they approached me, I didn't have to go ask them, they approached me, hey how much do you need? They, they came on board as a sponsor for Doc Dogs to make sure that that came back to town. And the, the story of Limerick and Spirit of Republic and how that thing has come to Lincoln, kept seeing this, all these lights on in this, this vacant building downtown. What's going on in there? What's going on in there? And over four, five, six months time, hey, there's a brewery coming to town. Well, who's doing that? <laughs> and they were actually going to set their tanks up inside Spirit of Republic, inside the main serving area. Mm -hmm. And they figured out very quickly, huh, we're going to have to put it somewhere else because we don't have enough space because there's so many people coming in. And in the old Kennedy bill paying section on the, the alley by Gazzardo's, in the alley where you pick your pizzas up, they've got a full blown, blown brewery in there. And to <laughs> see that equipment and see those, I stopped in and, and picked up a growler to give as a present to someone Friday night. Troy and Bussy are in there cleaning up. They had just brewed another batch of beer. And how neat that is to go yeah. in there with a growler, fill it up and take it home, and you got family coming over, you pull that growler out, well, what's this? Where'd that come from? Oh, it's brewed right here in Lincoln, Illinois. It just makes you feel good that you've got a product that is supporting a local business that is really, really good. Growler, yeah. that's a new word to me. 64 ounce brown jug. Which is a heck of a lot more than you're going to use. <laughs> you purchase the jug, it's four bucks, and then I think it's $14 to have it filled up, but they have a special license and they can only sell the okay. items that they brew. So you just stop in with your growler, give them $14, you they refill. fill the growler up, you take it home, put it in your fridge, sip on it as you're cooking your Saturday dinner or whatever. As you're cooking your Could you make a stop yeah. by there, Jim, with the dogs while you're out walking your dog? Just, uh, <laughs> could you have a dog growler too? There you go. My wife made a comment about uh, last fall, there's 
two things on a Sunday afternoon that makes Chris Grau happy. Burning charcoal and a growler of stingy bastard. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, but, you said that you really got into that grapefruit beer. You mm -hmm. thought that was really nummy. Now, then, would you and everybody else have an opportunity to strike up a relationship with these people so that you could go to their brewery or sure. winery from mm -hmm. time to time and buy yourself a little stock. Mm -hmm. You bet. You betcha. <laughs> and it's, it's something that it's that's one of the nice surprises of this event that they have so such a wide variety of different things to try. Like our barbecue, there's uh, so many different vendors and different things that we've got downtown. You got an opportunity to try different things and pair it with different uh, different beers and ciders and wine. Um, each different barbecue vendor has got a different style of how they present their their pulled pork or their ribs, so you can try each one of those. Um, and it's just a nice change of pace for downtown Lincoln. The other piece I want to make sure that we don't forget to mention is that the flea market and craft fair is back down at Scully Park. Yes, it is. And so by we do Oasis. want, by, and the Oasis is putting that on. And so Nancy and her staff have done a great job in getting those vendors set up and, and that ready to go again on that weekend. So we really do have a full weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday, I should say, a full um, I think the craft fair is only Saturday, but mm -hmm. we do have a full Friday and Saturday um, lineup for you everyone. You sure have. Now, for, for anybody that wants to actually sample competition barbecue, are, the KCBS contestants, uh, contestants that come are there to cook and submit for judging. They're not there to vend to the general public. But on Saturday, we do have a wristband program that we do where you can buy a wristband for $15 and then you can go to the participating backyard teams and get a rib for each one of those guys and then vote for your favorite one. It's really, we've got kind of a compromise with the local health department that allows us to do this for a very, very short period of time. It's from 2 to 3 o'clock on Saturday afternoon, so, but you need to get downtown early. The wristbands go on sale Saturday morning and once they're gone, they're, they're gone. gone. So. Yeah. Yeah, and let's not paint the health department in a bad light because oh, they no, they've no. got their rules and <laughs> yes, they do. And thank you God for good. that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. again, same with Liquor Commission and the City Liquor Commission and yes. everyone else. There, there are things that we have to do to protect the contestants, to protect um, our citizens and the con uh, constituents. Can you tell I've been an alderman for a while? <laughs> the, the people that come down to the um, that come down to the festival and participate, we have to make sure that we have a quality festival and that we stay within all of the rules and regulations to do. We've so. talked a lot, a lot about participation, with the emphasis being on uh, the liquid participation. <laughs> uh, a major part of this uh, is the, the cook-offs with these bar barbecues and so forth. And uh, as Mr. Grau can attest, the, if you're going to do this and get in a big time way, you're you're, you're going to get your feet wet. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, there's significant uh, um, investments would be the word uh, in his cook-off equipment. Uh, not all of which is just going to the back of a wheelbarrow. When we when we first started, most of the guys were coming with a pickup truck or a van. They put up a couple tents, a couple canopies, mm -hmm. tables, and set up underneath that. Now most of these guys are coming with these full-blown rigs with enclosed kitchens, por open porches with a, with a cooker on the back, which we had to accommodate them with additional electricity, which we've oh. laid infrastructure in all over downtown to make sure that these guys have got safe, adequate, stable power so they can power their equipment. There would be nothing worse than getting mm -hmm. to 2 o'clock in the morning and the power goes out and your power draft doesn't work and your rotisserie doesn't work. And I've got a, my uh, cooking partner, Jim Bishop, and I have worked really hard on the, uh, the infrastructure downtown to make sure that we've got that. Um, and it'd be nice to see the, the, the city and the merchants utilize that infrastructure for other events, but I'm sure that'll come at some point. That'll come sometime. Well, you I know, you, you've really broadened my horizons here. Between the two of you and your committees, bless their hearts, and your volunteers, bless their hearts, I mean, there are so much that you keep all the balls in the air. It, it it's is, a challenge. It is. Uh, Chris and I, Chris and I's committees meet, and then Chris and I meet, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then uh, and then uh, our 
poor spouses have to listen to us oh, go yeah. through uh, over in our heads, did we do this? Did I do this today? And and here's the other sacrifice that's made from Chris and I's side of things. Gratefully, um, we have some staff within our businesses that understand the needs of our time right now mm-hmm. in this last month of this festival. And our staff, my staff, um, Kathy, I couldn't do it without her right now. She takes on a brunt of um, a lot of my phone calls and 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 kind of organizing my time as I'm out getting my last couple sponsorship dollar checks arranged or picking up the glasses from the companies as they're done or making sure the t-shirt orders go in and Chris is doing the same so um, we we can't do this without our people too the people that are really connected to us personally yes. um, that really help us because they know the passion we have behind this mm-hmm. festival and how much it means to us and how much the um, the festival itself I, we believe means to the city um, and the county so do your kids remember that your names are mom my kids and love Dad? grandma that weekend because they don't yes. see mommy <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I'm great my village is great my between my mother-in-law and my mom they take the kids and and because we're we're downtown till one two in the morning and we're back by seven it's an interesting deal when this <laughs> so. I'm, I'm off on Thursday that the event starts and I go downtown Thursday about 11 o'clock and we start hooking, hooking infrastructure up and from Thursday at 11 until Sunday at noon my wife says she's a barbecue widow she just doesn't yeah, see me really. and she comes down and we have some fun and we always make it a paint point to to go to the beer tent on Saturday night and have some you know have a little relaxation time and try to enjoy it but um, I just resist going home because I my, my brother-in-law Brad told me one time you know this only happens once a year <laughs> he's right so you got to be down there and enjoy it yeah. and all these competitors come rolling in and we're all friends with them it's sure, just like a big family sure. reunion when you know that's that's a part of Lincoln that that I've loved I grew up in Minneapolis and goodness knows they had lots and lots and lots to offer all the time but this is so different it's so intimate mm-hmm. because that's a local flavor yes and it's just uh, it's just a whole different ball green and a wonderful place to raise a family it's I tell you Logan County's got a lot going for it yes, I it agree does. and I just also want to say if you have family and young kids and you want to come down and listen to the band and and you're not a beer drinker and whatever the courthouse lawn is a great little patio oh, <laughs> for the yeah. evening. We, have a, we have um, a nice we'll have a nice tent there, with tables and there's chairs. There's a tent so. with table and chairs that doesn't that's outside of the twenty one entry area. So there are opportunities for people with families even in the evenings to come down and enjoy the, the music. Oh sure. <laughs> Many thanks to Michelle Bauer and Chris Grau, the son of one of my favorite guys of all time. And we appreciate the fact that you are uh, you you've really donated a lot of yourselves and your time besides uh, something out of that wallet uh, or the lady's pocketbook. Um, you, you you're you're just engendering the extra things about Lincoln Golden County that are great. Mm-hmm. So thank you very much, young lady. Thanks and for having sir, us. For yeah. We appearing. really appreciate the opportunity. We final, enjoyed it. Thank final you. final opening day. Yeah, May 31st, 31st yeah. June 1st. I'd like to, uh, I guess, challenge the, uh, the, the residents of Lincoln and Logan County that if you have a relative, a friend, a business associate that lives outside the area, invite them down. Say, hey, we got this great event going on in downtown Lincoln. Please come to Lincoln come that and weekend enjoy. and see what we've got going on. There's any, if you idea. don't like barbecue, you don't like craft beer, there's all kinds of other restaurants and shops and different things downtown that you can come and enjoy. So that's Good idea to include those, Chris. Bring, yeah. bring, a, bring a family member, a friend, a business associate, bring somebody to town that weekend. We do have a train that runs yeah. north and south. <laughs> those train tickets can be really advantageous if you're going to come sample some beer. You don't have to tell your friends, both of your friends yes. up in Bloomington. <laughs> all two of them. <laughs> yeah, all two of them. Thank you very much, Chris and Michelle. Go right ahead, Mr. Ash.